Welcome back, my friends, to another ranked game on our generally hyper roll channel. Before I get into it, let me throw the graphic up now. Yeah, subscribe, like, comment, do stuff that helps the YouTube algorithm. And if you're just here for hyper roll, then just hit the like button and go. I understand. But this is a follow up to the previous video where I showed you the fast eight level strategy for ranked. This is going to be a slow roll and I went into it with the plan of doing Animaniacs as a slow roll. And I'm going to take it to certain extremes as you will see, but I wanted to really give an idea of how this works. First and foremost, the obvious is going to be pick up any champions or keep any champions who fit directly into the build. It gave me an Alistair, so I kept him in and I also found a Silas. But one of the keys in this build is I am not rolling and I am not leveling. But let's look at these first three augments. Nothing really fits anything that goes with Animaniacs. So we're gonna go ahead and re-roll it. And sadly, again, nothing really fits anything that's gonna go with Animaniacs. I don't wanna go with Hustler because I really want to show the slow roll. So I'm gonna grab Mascot because putting a Mascot emblem on someone will ultimately allow them to go to the side and help heal. Your goal with slow roll is not to level up and to maximize your gold. I'm gonna get a Yumi out of the round, but I can take her out and then put Jinx in. We're going to stick with this team. We have 10 gold. We're going to get one interest. We're locking for that Silas at the bottom. We don't wanna buy him, because if we do, we'll go down to nine, and we're not likely to win this first round. Winning a round would give you an additional gold, so I'm waiting to see if we win, I'll buy the Silas and unlock, but if we lose, I'm just going to leave it locked so I can pick up the additional Silas. Again, we're not rolling, we're not leveling, we're just gonna let the game do everything for us. The reason I chose Animaniacs as the build I wanted to use to showcase this is that it does use a lot of ones and twos. Silas, Nasus, and of course Jinx is going to be one of the main carries. So you want to get them built up and this is the best way to do it. It's mostly been used by people who were running the supers builds, but they're probably gone now after the nerf. Animaniacs, however, has been slightly buffed. When the game automatically levels you up because you're getting two per turn anyway just take whatever's on your bench put it in make sure you always stay above the 10 level so 10 20 30 40 amount of gold if i bought this jinx it would put me down to 19 i would lose one golden interest and you don't want to do that and you can expect to lose a lot of these early fights some people take it to an extreme and don't play any champions when they're doing this just so they can guarantee themselves a lose streak and the gold that goes with it i'm not a big fan of that strategy personally but i just take the losses and then go one of the good things about this strategy is that if you're lose streaking you're likely to get first choice on the carousel so you can be more likely to craft exactly the champions you want or the items you want. In this case, we grabbed Vein with a tier because a tier is an important items for both Jinx and Misfortune. Now, even though Vein could fit into the build, if I sell the Vein and buy the other Jinx, I'm at 30 gold, so I'm gonna get my three interest and I get to put the tier onto Jinx. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to skip over some fights and just get to important moments. Notice here, I could two star the Jinx right now, but I'm at 40 gold. That's for interest. I don't want to lose that extra gold, so I just lock and wait for the next round. And yes, I am on a lose streak, but I'm getting extra gold for the lose streak and for the interest. Now, what you do once you're over 50 is you just start rolling and looking for the champions who will fill in your build. So you're going to roll through your gold down to 50. And if you find a champion who fits, you buy them, when you get to 50, you stop and wait. You are now likely to be behind everyone else in levels. Note this person is five, I am four. I have less champions on the board and less powerful champions, so I'm pretty guaranteed to lose, but there's a method to the madness. We go into the second augment and I am tempted by both Jeweled Lotus and Thrill of the Hunt, but because I want Misfortune to have the best crit chance possible, I end up going for the Jeweled Lotus. The game has now automatically leveled us to 5, so we're going to go in and put in an additional champion, but slow roll down to 50. When you pick up important elements like Zoe, which gives you Prankster, grab them, 
put them in, we can two-star the Silas and still stay at 50 and wait for the next fight. And even though you're kind of preset to lose because you're likely levels behind other people and your champions aren't up, you don't have the three costs yet, etc. in your build, you can surprise yourself and actually win some, which ends up breaking a lose streak, but yep, you get to keep your health, so there's a good and bad to it. And again, not to beat this too much into the ground, your strategy is you want to roll down to 50. So you're looking for things that fit. In this case, Echo is going to be part of the build. So we bring in Echo, who's a stronger unit than Zoe. We don't sell Zoe, we just keep her on the bench until we can actually put her in. You want to make every little improvement you can while still maintaining what you're doing. You want to stay above 50 gold and roll down when you get a chance, but when you see something like an Echo that you can replace for a Zoe, you go ahead and do it just because, as you can see, that becomes a key factor in us then winning this next round and preserving more health. And you can see the plan starting to come together as I am now two jinxes away from gold. Once I get there and once I see misfortune, it's going to be time to change the strategy entirely and then flip over into leveling. And the real key to this strategy is to have a lot of patience. You're going to be tempted to roll down earlier to try to solidify the team. You're going to want to be on par with other people, but you really just need to stay focused on target. It doesn't always work out, but for us, there's our gold three-star jinx. And now it's time to start leveling and doing also a little bit of rolling with it when you're above 50. Now that we have the gold champ we want, the main focus is to now start leveling. I will generally level up until I'm around 53 or 52, then I might roll just to see if I can fill more stuff in. Now I have found Jinx to be a very deceptively strong champion in this set. People do not expect a three-star Jinx to suddenly take over matches, but you're going to see what this one can do, especially with a static shiv. She's able to do tons of damage, shred magic resist, then bounce away when it's prankster time and destroy the team. It's now time for our final augment and we get Make It Rain a amazing misfortune augment that will give 20 gold every three player combats. We also get a misfortune in the shop, but again, we're primarily focused on leveling now, but misfortune is going to go into this match because putting her in will help us get more gold later so we can level up more or do a lot of rolling. With a gold three-star Jinx and a Misfortune on the team and also the three Pranksters. So remember, they are getting stunned when they kill the target dummy. This build really starts to take shape. You can see Misfortune executing and Jinx just ruling the damage charts. And for time's sake, I'll skip you past some fights and just see that the next thing is to just keep leveling now. Your goal is to get to eight, so then you can start to roll down and look for more champions like Misfortune and Echo so you can finish out the build. And I decided to make Echo more of the tank than I normally do because he's attracting a lot of attention in backline so he can hold people up. And again, when he drops that target dummy, it stuns them, so it's doing a lot of work for us. We have done our three player combat, so it is time for Misfortune to, well, make it rain. And we are going to use this to level up as much as we can, get as close to eight as possible without going below 50. We want to continue to get that five interest as long as possible. A big part of the reason that I still do this leveling strategy at this point is because I'm at 56 health and I'm on a win streak. If I was in the lower part down in the 20s, I would then level up to 8 as quickly as possible and try to solidify the team, but I'm not in danger of being knocked out anytime soon. I've got a few games left in me, so I'd rather use that time to level. For our last individual item, I'm going to go ahead and grab the needlessly large rod because that will allow me to make a jeweled gauntlet, which will give Misfortune an even greater crit chance than she already has with the jeweled lotus. And when she crits, it's really strong. 
Now that I'm up at level eight, I can roll down at least to 50 to try to fill in the additional team that I need. I'm not gonna go below 50 because at this point I'm still winning. As long as we keep winning right now, I'm going to continue to use the slow roll tactic that got us our three-star Jinx to try to get to a two-star Misfortune and a two-star Echo. I want those champions to be really strong before I try to push up to the next level if I'm going to do that at all. It's likely given our augment, but the first strategy is to get the two-star champions. Now, as you can see from the scoreboard, this game is pretty tight right now with the majority of players, four out of the five, scrunched between 56 and 69 health. So this game is going to get close. This person is the one down at 12, but they're still a really strong team as you can see. And if it wasn't for the pranksters and that jeweled lotus hitting a crit, we might have lost that one. Now we've gone through our three player combat, so it's time for Misfortune to, well, make it rain again. And given that I'm on a pretty solid win streak, I want to use some of this gold to level up. I could go all the way to nine, but I don't need to go that far yet. I want to save some. So I'm going to level up some and then roll some to try and finish out and find the last Misfortune. Not this time, but hoping I can soon. And this is back from before the supers were nerfed down into near extinction, so we still saw a lot of them. Notice this person is down at level 7. I've had the advantage of getting up to 8, so I have an additional player and some really strong synergy that's allowing me to push forward. And it doesn't feel as triumphant when you jump into a carousel, but we are now into the top 4. I'm looking at the Spear of Sojin as the item I want most. I don't get to go in the first two, but unless both of them grab Spear of Sojins, I know I'm going to be able to get it. That is a key misfortune item. Coming out of the carousel, we get our two-star misfortune. We can sell the Soraka, put the Spear of Sojin on misfortune, and then I will level to again 50 gold and just hold here. I could go to nine, but I'd rather have some additional gold to roll once I get there. And again, this was recorded back when supers were ruling the rift and this person with three, I actually make that four golds and supers is getting a huge amount of bonus damage. But our team has the ability to just wipe an entire team off the board. Misfortune's ult is so devastating that it can take out a team and not give them much of a chance to recover, which is why I like to put her in with the pranksters so she gets that opportunity. And now that we're going to have plenty of gold to roll, I'm gonna go ahead, level all the way up to nine. We are now done with leveling. Fiddlesticks can enter the game and I can roll to try and get a two-star Fiddlesticks. And this was almost a huge positioning mistake on my part as I put myself directly across from Urgot, who is going to knock the main damage part of my team up. Luckily, Misfortune is able to execute him and take him off the board, and my Fiddlesticks pretty much cleans out the rest of their team. So Misfortune is again able to just use her ult and clear their team and destroy our damage charts. And this is potentially our final item depending on how these matches go. I don't know if we'll get into a back and forth with someone, but I decide to go ahead and grab a second jeweled gauntlet. Even though she's already up at 85, this will give her a 100% chance of crit with a 150% damage increase. I end up getting my two star fiddle. So this team is pretty much done as is. I'm just gonna see if I can three star one of my four costs now. And for sake of time, I will skip over some fights, but this person has a real critical error on their team. They have a Syndra, but only one champion on the bench for her to throw in. She no longer cannot throw anyone else into the fight. When you have Syndra, you want to fill your bench up as much as possible with fours and fives that can be thrown in. She might not get to cast twice, but you wanna take the chance that she can. And again, to save some video time, I'll skip through some of the fights. We get another Make It Rain after the final carousel. I'm able to pick up a Rage Blade, which I'm going to go ahead and put on Jinx, because that's just a fantastic weapon on her. And in all reality, with me up at 9 and them at 7, a 
three-star Jinx and a two-star Misfortune with these items, this game is pretty much over. Even if they had a full bench of fives that Syndra could pull off, it really wouldn't matter because we're going to be able to execute their champions and stun them when necessary. You can see it's fairly easy for Misfortune to finish them off, or not completely, but pretty darn close. And I really, really wanted to get the three-star gold misfortune, but I was not able to get there even with all the extra gold I had and being up at level nine where I have a 30% chance at fours, I could not make it happen. But I hope this helped show you when I talk about slow roll, what I'm talking about and how it works. And very quickly, it was GG for everyone. But the real key to the strategy is sticking with it, accepting those early game losses, and then using them to your advantage. And again, I went into this game with the plan to do Animaniacs. That's not necessarily the best idea, but uh, that's what I did. Last one was Threats. This one was Animaniacs. Just to show you, yep, it's two of five. I got 254 for this. Hope you enjoyed this video. It helps you. And as always, hope you have an absolutely, absolutely awesome day.